The Lindemann Music Book Combo is an analog preamplifier, a DNA network player, a room ready endpoint, a digital to analog converter and a 2x70 watts Encore amplifier in a very elegant compact housing. The Lindemann Music Book series comprises of three models. The Power 2 Encore Power Amp, the Source 2 Analog Preamp Streamer and DAC and the Combo which is on review here and combines the function of the Power 2 and the Source 2. Let's see how it is to be used. The Music Book Combo, Combo from here on, needs to be connected to a pair of loudspeaker or alternatively a set of headphones. An infrared remote is supplied and lets you control volume, input, play, pause, skip and power. Since the combo is easiest controlled using the app on a tablet or smartphone, it's best connected to your router. That also gives you access to internet radio and streaming services like Deezer, Tidal, Cobus and Spotify. And if you have a computer or NAS holding music, you can play that too if you have it running a DNA server program. A USB drive or CD or DVD USB drive can be inserted on the rear. If you still use a normal CD player, that can be connected to using either SPDIF, TOSLINK or analog connections. Other analog sources, like for instance an FM tuner can be connected too. Just like a turntable with moving magnet cartridge and a digital audio output of a TV. And if you have a Rune server running, it can be operated from Rune too. Quite impressive for such a compact device. The very nicely designed aluminium cabinet measures 280 by 220 by 63 mm and weighs 3 kilos. A large part of the front is covered by perspex with behind it a smaller but very clear OLED display. The standby button is on top, poorly visible on this photo. The 6.3 mm headphone jack is on the front with above it the multifunction rotary encoder. Turning it controls playback volume, pressing it mutes the system and simultaneously pressing and turning lets you select inputs with the exception of network functions that are controlled from the Lindemann app on smartphone or tablet. Then the rear. Right we see the IC mains inlet with next to it the power switch. Then the 100 megabit network socket with above it one of the two Wi-Fi and Bluetooth antenna sockets. The two antennas come with the unit. Next to the network socket you find the Wi-Fi protected setup button. Simply press it and the one on your router or access point and you are automatically paired. A USB drive holding music or a CD or DVD drive can be connected on this USB 2 socket. Then the digital inputs, one SPDIF and one TOSLINK. Two pairs of banana sockets for the loudspeaker outputs are slightly left of center. Further left the preamp outputs intended for use with a subwoofer but can of course also be used for connecting a second power amp. Then three analog inputs, two on line level that accepts for instance signals from a tuner, the analog outputs of a digital player or the analog outputs of a TV. The last input is the phono input suited for moving magnet cartridges. The turntable's earth wire is to be connected on this 2 mm ground terminal. The small pin comes with the unit and has to be soldered on the earth wire of your turntable. It's not often I find the construction too complex to open up a device on the test. But this one comes close and since the manufacturer is quite open about what's inside, I close it again after the first hurdle. Let's start with the switch mode power supply. Do I need to repeat that it's not the kind of power supply but the quality of the design that matters? So that's to judge later by ear. Lindemann uses the same streaming engine they use in the Lime Tree series of their products. The Stream 810 streaming module by Stream Unlimited. This company was founded 
by the ex Philips people over 15 years ago in Vienna and offers universal streaming solutions. It's like using a DAC chip instead of building a DAC with discrete components. The output of the streaming module is an I2S format, having the data and clock signals over separate lines. That is connected to the Asai Kase micro devices AK4137 resampler. This can be used in two modes, PCM or DSD, slightly misleading terms. In DSD mode all digital inputs are converted to a one bit signal and fed to the DAC chip. In PCM setting the PCM signals are submitted natively, so without changing the sample rate, to do a synchronous resampling in order to eliminate potential jitter. In this settings the DSD signals are equally passed on on altered. The DSD setting is the factory default, but I prefer the PCM setting. After the resampler the signal is sent to the AK4493 DAC chips, one per channel in differential mode. The 4493 is a top DAC chip, it can handle PCM up to 768 kHz 32 bit and DSD 512. In streaming mode the combo accepts signals up to 384 kHz 24 bit for wired network, 192 kHz for Wi-Fi and SPDIF, while Toslink by design is limited to 96 kHz. For DSD it's DSD 256 for wired network, DSD 128 for Wi-Fi and SPDIF and DSD 64 for Toslink. Don't worry too much about missing those extremely high sampling rates. Apart from the fact that most music still is 44.1 kHz and seldom is higher than 192 kHz, the better the equipment the smaller the differences between 44.1 and 192 kHz. See my video Why High Res An Updated View, links at the usual places. Far more important is how the circuits are designed and what filters are used. As you might know I am convinced that differences between top quality DAC chips like the AK4493 used here is largely due to the circuit design they are used in. The power supply, the print design, the clock crystal and the analog circuits following the DAC chip. See my video Why Switches Influence the Sound Quality that describes more than what happens with switches. Links at the usual places. The clock oscillator is a MEMS type, a microelectromechanical system oscillator with femto precision. In general MEMS oscillators are less microphonic and more temperature stable than crystal oscillators. The output of the DAC chip is sent to the analog preamp that also accepts line level inputs and a phono input. Over the analog volume control the analog signal is sent to the Encore power amps, the well known class D amp from the north of my country. Again here it's often the implementation that defines the final sound quality, so again it's the ears that decide. This is a true hybrid device. If you use analog sources like a turntable or a tuner, the signal remains analog. If you use networked audio or CD player connected over SPDIF or Toslink, the signal is upsampled, converted and fed to the analog preamp, passes the analog volume control and sent to the power amps. Many functions can be controlled from the infrared remote, standby and mute, volume, input selection, display brightness and system information, skip tracks and play pause. The eject button is only functional when an external optical drive is connected. Then the play pause and skip buttons also control the optical drive. For the streaming functions the app on the smartphone or tablet has to be started. I use the iPad Pro here. Directly after startup a list of Lindemann devices present in the network are shown. In my case there only is one of course, the combo. After tapping that a screen becomes visible with left input choices and right the music that is played, which is empty right now. Last played and local playlists are obvious. Music server shows the DLA server, servers in my case, in the network. Let's select a minim server on SYN 8 and search for an album that contains danger. And the speed here largely depends on the DNA server and the network. Let me show you another nice feature. Inputs can be renamed. 
These are the default names, but they can easily be renamed like this. Especially nice for family acceptance. Internet radio stations are categorized and thus easily found. Streaming services, Deezer, Tidal, Cobus and Spotify can be accessed too. A subscription is needed. Let me show you Tidal. Go to the new album releases and play the album Norm by Andy Schoff. As you can see it all works fine. Finally let me show you the settings menu. The device name can be changed in for instance living room. The language choice is limited to English and German. Other settings are more or less self explanatory, but let me show you the device settings where the DAC mode can be altered. When pressing the info button on the remote, the mode is shown graphically as described earlier. PCM or DSD. Operating the combo is logical and easy after a very short learning curve. The fact that you can control the basic functions from the front, the remote and the app helps here. I guessed the combo would be best reviewed in comparison with my reference setup 1B. That was based on earlier experiences with Lindemann gear. So the combo was connected to the PMC FAC12 signature loudspeakers on Isoacoustics Gaia 2 isolators using AudioQuest Robinhood Zero loudspeaker cable. Admittedly the PMCs cost a lot more than loudspeakers that will normally be bought with the combo. But I have no room to place yet another reference setup. The connection to the network was made over the Network Acoustics Muon filter system to the SOTM SNH10G network switch. The Synology DS1890 Plus NAS with DX517 extender running Minim server was used as the inlay server and the Intel NUC 10i7 FNH was the Rune server. It runs Rune Rock on a M.2 SSD and has the music stored on a 10TB Western Digital USB drive. The entire network setup is somewhat more complex. See about my reference setup January 2023 for more details. But functionally this picture is correct. I guessed the combo correctly, but still was surprised how well the little combo drove the 21k euros PMCs. Admittedly they have a mild impedance and face behaviour, but the sensitivity is only 84 dBs at 1 watt and 1 meter, 5 dBs lower than average. So 5 dBs more power is needed for the same acoustical output compared to an average speaker. But here is where the Encore shows its qualities. 70 watts per channel in 8 ohms or 130 watts in 4 ohms doesn't sound that much, but certainly in combination with the switch mode power supply, it delivers current instantly and with stamina, which is ideal for controlling woofers. The concern was more how the mid-range would sound, for the PMCs are extremely transparent. If there is a problem in the mid-range, it will become audible. The combo is a bit on the bright side, not to be confused with sharpness. So I reduced the toe-in of the speakers a bit. Off-axis the output rolls off a bit in the mids and the highs. PMC advises not to listen on axis anyway. I have used the combo with the Lindemann app using Tidal Cobus and Internet Radio, but mainly I use Rune as a source. The combo sounds dynamic fast with good texture in deep lows, good resolution in mids and highs. Sibilance is controlled fairly good which does its price justice. Pace and rhythm is very good. All this on the PMC loudspeakers with their extremely high resolution and low efficiency. Of course Class D can control lows of almost all speakers, but not all Class D amps sound convincing on the PMCs. Coloration in the mid range being the biggest shortcoming in many cases. Not with the combo. You have to spend more money to get the sound quality further up. I rate it halfway my set of 1 in between 1A and 1B. Don't be fooled by its appearance or the seemingly lack of controls. It's a very good looking and sounding little wonder. Just add speakers and internet connection and you're set. 
This is what good class D and good switch mode power supply can do for you. No large cooling profiles or large transformers needed to get a powerful amp. Add to that the reliable streaming platform with Rune Endpoint for if you want the best streaming. I know I didn't test the phono input nor the headphones output. I switched to digital years ago because of my tremor and although I still have a turntable it's not set up. And since I'm claustrophonic I'm unfit to judge headphone reproduction. But if the overall quality of the combo is something to go by, those two will be fine too. Whenever I review equipment, there always is someone that will comment that it's expensive, even with a 99 euro DAC. The combo retails for 4495 euros, including 21% VAT. That's a lot of money, but it's a just price for the combo. I even fell in love with it, kind of. Which brings me to the end of this show. See you next week, Friday at 5 pm Central European time. If you don't want to miss that, subscribe to my channel or follow me on the social media so you will be informed when new videos are out. Help me reach even more people by giving this video a thumb up or link to this video on the social media. It is much appreciated. Many thanks to those viewers that support this channel financially, especially in these times. It keeps me independent and lets me improve the channel further. If that makes you feel like supporting my work too, the links are in the comments below this video in YouTube. I'm Hans Beekhuizen, thank you for watching and see you in the next show or on the HBproject.com. And whatever you do, enjoy the music.